final review packet that you have. It is from questions 1 to 25. From that 1 to 25, there will be eight questions with three points each. Eight questions, three points each. So I can create equations. So when you take a look at your final review, and you're going through that, and you're kind of taking a look at it, um, and in a few minutes we will go through questions, any questions on 1 through 25. So just kind of looking at all those graphs, all that first part, through 25. That's going to be the first eight questions will be like questions 1 to 25 in your review pack. Okay, does that make sense, everyone? The second standard, if you would please um, turn to question 31. 31. And that's going to want to read the standard right above 31. So solving systems of linear equations and and solve and the inequality. It should be an inequality. So that's questions 31 to 46. This is in your review packet. Okay? So if I'm looking at your review packet, if I started at question 31 and I went back from 31 you can see that there's inequalities. You can see you have to ex do some explaining in 36 and 37. Um, there are um, the equations where you're using substitution, elimination. You could use graphing. All of those type of things. So 31 to 46. So it's story problems. It's giving two equations. It's you writing the two systems, the two equations. Five questions, three points each. Okay, so it'll be five of those. The last, uh, the next standard that's on this test is if you turn to question 29 in your review. So kind of going back. So 29. Keegan, would you read right before 29 what it says the standard is? So I can represent that on a scatter plot. So this is like E8, right? Or this yeah. lesson E8 that we just did, E9, okay, on our review, getting ready for this test and statistics. So you're going to make the scatter plot. Then you're going to be asked to write an equation. There will be three questions on this part. This is like questions 29 and 30. And I would say it's like in your review today that you were doing the E, um, E9 is just like those review questions that were making the scatter plot. So it is very important that I know what are your two points. Okay. We kind of cleared up for a few people, but it must have been still a misconception that the two points have to be data points always. Do they? Do the two points oh, must they no, be data no, points? No. No, 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 no. The two points, they could be data points, but what I'm looking for is, this one might not be a data point, but man, that was a nice point of intersection. And over here, this was not a data point. Man, that was a nice point. And these are my two points that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to find the slope, and I'm going to see this work on your paper, and then I'm going to see you started with point slope, and your final answer was in slope intersect. And then I'm going to ask you a question like, if I'm thinking about um, number 10 on the homework today where I you wrote the equation and then it said, okay, in 20 years, how much will it be? Or in, and you're asked to use this equation and see that it works for your graph. And then it might say, did you use interpolation or extrapolation? And if it was in between your data points, you're going to tell me interpolation. And if it's something way out here, you're going to say it was an extrapolation. And you can still get your answer using your equation. It's just that vocabulary. So that was on page 20 of your notes. Okay? So when I look at the first day of the test of your final next week on Tuesday, 
these are going to be my main three things that I'm going to be looking for. Um, there's a few more standards tomorrow. There's one, two, three, four, five, six standards that we look at on the second day of the final. But the systems of equation, that's pretty big for us in this unit, writing the equation. Now, I had someone tell me, you know, Mrs. Thompson, I'm looking at the review packet, and they went, and so that's what I want you to turn to now is just looking at the review. And what we're kind of going to do is go through some questions that you might have on your review, and mostly looking at the ones that are from the first day of the final. So that after we go through those, tomorrow, after we go through what's had on that first day of the final, I'm going to go through any questions, like if you did some of those, if you got it wrong, you don't understand it. Or you just look at it right now and maybe you haven't done any of the review yet, which is, you know, I understand, we're all busy. Um, but maybe that's you, and now all of a sudden you're like, crap, I have no idea how to do this. And so those would be the questions today for coming in outside of school and getting help on those. I've had a few of you come and get your old test, and you've looked at some things, and you're like, oh man, that makes so much more sense when I look at that now. So that's good. We're going to do the same thing on Monday. I'm going to give you what's on the second half of the final. Okay? I'll go through and tell you the standards and how many questions and what the points are worth. We'll do that on, on uh, Monday. But you should know that anything that I haven't covered so far in this final review, it's going to be on the second day of the final. right? So pretty much everything after question 46, did we say? Something like that. That's going to be, except there is one section, the two-way tables. We did not do question like 26 to 30. That will be on the second day of the final, right? But everything else through 46 is on the first day of the final. So looking at the first page of your final review, questions on anything like, I don't get how they came up with this equation. This doesn't make sense to me. Anything I can look at or go through with writing equations. And I know here you said you didn't. Have yours with you, so I will let you just look at this one if you want to. Anyone else not have their final review packet with them that wants to look at a hard copy of mine? Get for us. So it says a gecko, and it says the length of the gecko is, and in this case, about three fifths of the length that we want. So sometimes writing it out in words, the gecko is three, is it three fifths? Yep, three fifths of the iguana, right? Do we know, so if I put it in words, of usually means multiply, right? Do we know how long the iguana was? No, so we don't know. Can we use I for iguana? I don't care. Can we use X? Sure. Three fifths is going to stay there, right? So it's three fifths x equals. Do we know how long our gecko was? Yeah, we told it. It was six. Should the iguana be longer? Yeah, it should, because it's three fifths of this is equal to six, which means it's not as long, right? It's like sixty percent of it. And then how would you solve this? You would solve by just multiplying on both sides by five thirds, right? So this would be right in the equation, right? Like two or three points, and then solving, right? So this might be a three-point question, or one like this, right? So first point would be, did you write, were you able to write the equation? Equations must have equal signs, right? So if you just told me six times five thirds, which is true, that is how you get the answer of ten, and all you did was x equals ten, that's not an equation, understood? I need this part of it. I need you translating what the words were saying in number four. And then giving your answer, and in this case, labeling it as 10 inches. Okay, does that make sense? Any other ones on that first page when you look at them that you're not sure about? So at the top here, I put down um, to make sure you understand point slope and your slope intercept form. And then I make sure you go back, if it's in the notes in unit, you know, it might be B or C, where we were doing vertical and horizontal lines, right? So when is it horizontal, when is it vertical? Now granted, you can look at these answers, all the answers are in the back for you to take a look at. 
Some of these are super nice to write equations for, right? You can just use slope intercept. You have the y intercept, and now you just need to find the slope. Oh, you went down 1 and over 4. So m was equal to, in this case, negative 1 fourth. Some of you might want to remember and put the space to help you that, oh, this is going to be y equals 0 has a 0 slope, undefined, negative, positive. Because if you write this equation for number 2 and you tell me y equals 1 fourth x minus 1, it's wrong, correct? It's not a positive slope. I can tell that because the line is slanted down. So making sure that everything kind of goes together, right? Any questions on that second page as you look at writing those equations, okay? So you'd be asked to write it from a graph. 10 through 15. Number 14. How are you going to do it? Number 14. So turn to number 14 in your review. Someone help me out. What would I do for 14? Because I have people struggling with this one. I could estimate the y-intercept, but I don't want to do that because this is my final exam and I want it exact. Okay? And it looks like it's maybe a half, but I don't know if it's really a half or if it's 0.45 or if it's 0.47 or if it's 0.52. So what do I do in 14, Grace? Start me off. Two points on my line. One, two, I agree. One, two is going to be a nice and three, five. Three, five. Okay. One, two, three, five. So if we are looking at this, what would you tell me my slope is? Now, can I find the slope without computing it if it's a graph? What do I have to do to find the slope on a graph? It's what over what? Y over X or rise over run, right? Change in Y over change in X. Or you could use rise over run. So how much did we rise? From 2 up to 5. 3. How much did we run? Going across. 2. 1 and a half. Can I leave it as 3 over 2? Yeah. I don't have my equation yet, right? Help me out. Which form do I want to start with as I'm looking at this, Jacob? I got my slope. How do I start an equation once I have a slope? And two points. Point slope. So tell me I'm going to write it. Which points do you want to use? One, two. Okay, so we're going to use one, two. And I would be writing down y equals what? Three over two. Three over two. X minus one. one plus two. So this three over two is really one and a half. So I have y equals, and I would take it either way, one and a half or three over two x minus one point five, right? Plus two, and that's what y is equal to. So my equation for number fourteen, and and if it doesn't tell you to put it in slope intercept form, you could stop at this point, right? But if it says write it in slope intercept form, which I think a majority of it does, because we want you to change it, you could either use 3 over 2 or 1.5. And if I have a negative 1.5 plus 2, that's a positive, so x, and then plus 1 half. Which is kind of what we thought. It looked like 1 half before, but we weren't sure. So here's the other thing. Remember, this has to match, right? This has to match this point right here, because that's at 1 half. I have had some people write an equation like this. They go through all this work, they put down 1.5 plus 1 half. That's wrong. That's not the equation, right? Does it make sense that I can't have that equation? What's 1 and a half plus a half? It's y equals what? This is y. If you can add those two, right? There's no variable here. So if you do not put the x in, it's wrong. Some of you did that on the test when we took the test in this unit. You just put down 1.5 and you didn't put variable x and then you put plus a half. 
This is the same as y equals 2. Do you agree? That's a horizontal line. That's this line right here. That's not this line. Okay? So when you write equations, you want to make sure you're writing them the right way and you don't miss those little details like putting in the x, right, as you're looking at it. As you look at um, the rest of that page through number 17, you, I will give you an equation and I'll ask you to graph it. So it's not going to just be pick, write the equation. I'll give you an equation and say graph it, okay? So it might be in point slope form. It might be in slope-intercept form, or it might be in standard form. So take a look at that next page in your packet. Anyone questions on graphing notes? I hope they're not too much. Um, number, I don't think yours is 18, though. Is it? Yeah. Maybe 18 or 19 if you're looking at those ones. Um, if you look at those questions, what you're looking at there is it might be easiest to graph those in standard form, right? So if you're looking at 18 um, and 20, probably put finding the x-intercept and y-intercept. So replace x with 0, replace y with 0, and find those two points. That's a nice, easy way when they're in standard form. Okay? A lot of times, if it tells you slope-intercept form or if it tells you um, point slope, just making sure you're understanding what those things mean as you are looking at them. Any other questions when you're given the points like through 25? Yes. 23. 23? I'm looking at 23, I'm definitely using point slope, right? So it says right equation slope intercept form. I'm going to start and I know that my slope is going to be 2 and I have the point 2, 1. So I'm going to take y equal my slope, negative 2, x minus 2, because remembering the equation is y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. So I'm going to go to this x minus 2, and then I'm going to put plus 1, and I'm going to distribute. So this is y, the one with the scatter plot. That's why we're doing all that, because it's, it's, you're just applying all this to real world situations. So here you got a plus 4 plus 1. Remember, negative times a negative is positive 4, not a negative 4. So some of you sometimes make just really small mistakes that way. And if it helps you to rewrite this as plus a negative 2, so you have 4, and my final answer would be y equals negative 2x plus 5. Okay. And 24 and 25, the only thing different is you have to find the slope first. All right, so 26, 27, those ones are not on the first day final. So we'll come back to those questions if you have questions on those. Those are on your test tomorrow where you will have questions like that and they ask you for relative frequency and doing some stuff like that. Um, so you do have to have some like that. But looking at 30... 29, 30, 31. Questions on any of those? That's the next part. That's pretty much like tomorrow's test, right? With finding the line of best fit, writing the equations, okay? The questions on 29 to 30. Any questions on those? Then it goes to systems, and that's the last part of your test tomorrow. So systems is when we are taking a look at everything from 31 through 46. That's everything else that will be on the first day of the test. So, looking at 31 through 46. This is Unit D. So your notes from Unit D, where you had to write the equations, remember we did the test in two parts? The first part, you had to write the equations, and then the second part, you solved it. The quiz at the beginning, you use substitution, elimination, and graphing for solving. I don't care which way you do it on the final. You just got to make sure that when you give me your answer for a system, that it's an ordered pair, x, comma, y. And if it's a story problem, then you answer the story, right? And you tell me what you were looking for. But I am going to probably see the system of equations. 
Here you're asked to write what were these two inequalities, knowing when it's a dashed line and a solid line, when you're shading above or below, so looking at those. Here you were asked to actually solve the graphing ones. This is where we came up with possible solutions. So, questions on anything else I could answer from anyone? Any part through 46? Need help? Don't get it. Don't remember. This is be fun. Yeah. 41. So 41. First thing we have to decide, is this going to be an, equal, uh, an equation, system of equations, or system of inequalities? When you read question 41, are they inequalities or are they equations? What would you guys say? Read through 41. Tell me, what do you think? Equations or inequalities? Should it have less or equal, greater or equals, or should it just be an equal sign? What do you think? Dollar ninety-five in her pocket, twenty-seven nickels and dimes. Three equals. Two equations, right? The first one's going to deal with the number of coins that you have, right? So we're going to write with the number of coins. So the number is we have um, n for nickels plus D for dimes, and how many coins did we have? 27. Next, it says, we're dealing with the value of it. So, each nickel is 5 cents, 0 0.05 N, a dime is 10 cents, point one D, the value, so the number and the value. So remember, and if it helps to go back and maybe even watch some of those videos where we were explaining writing the equations, and then if I am looking at this, oh, I think this got a capital D, and this is going to be equal to 1.95. And remember, there were times when we had infinitely many solutions and no solutions. There were times, there's some questions that asked you about that, I think 16 and 17, explain what it means to have no solution, infinitely many. And then remember, sometimes we have non-viable solutions, right? We can't have a negative amount of coins, right? That doesn't make sense to a problem. So um, I don't think there's as many like that on the final, but making sure you're understanding. Any other ones besides that one? So um, remember that when you're doing the break-even ones, you have an income and an expense, right? Remember that sometimes a lot of our equations might be in standard form as you are looking at those. So, um, 